I'm gonna give you five of the best strength movements for speed development, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, I'm Dane Miller from Garage Strength, and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in improving your explosiveness, gaining strength, and enhancing your athletic capability, make sure that you subscribe down below, you ring that notification bell, and you comment with what you are doing in training and how we can help you with your training endeavors. So for over the last 10 years, we have had over 450 NCAA athletes come through our doors. We've had NCAA athletes that have become all Americans in nine different sports, and we've had multiple NCAA champions in three different sports. And so why have we been successful? You know, one of the things that we've been so good at here at Garage Strength is that we've understood how to utilize strength movements for speed. And if we can remember back to our sprinting based videos, what are those keys behind speed? We've got to understand that rate of force development is one of those key elements. We have to understand that acceleration during the drive phase is extremely important and it's the second main factor. And that third element is being able to utilize maximum mechanics when you are running. So utilizing proper technique when you're accelerating and into that top end speed, you've got to be able to hold that technique at that high end speed. And so utilizing strength movements to achieve those three elements has been one of our fortes. And that's what we're going to go into today with these five key strength movements. So that first strength movement, the power clean. A lot of coaches have gotten away from this because they can't teach technique. They're afraid of coaching you up. They're afraid of getting you more explosive. They're afraid of making you a better athlete. And one of the biggest factors behind a power clean or a full clean is that it can increase your rate of force development. It's going to make you faster off the line. Your nervous system will be able to recruit high threshold motor units more rapidly. So you will be able to get faster off that line. That first step is going to be quicker. And on top of that, when you receive the bar, you're going to increase your trunk stability. You're going to improve your deceleration capability, and that's going to lead to a stronger trunk that is able to hold you more upright when you're running at top end speed. And it's also going to help you with agility. So utilize a power clean. I recommend doing three to four sets of three and maybe two sets of five, getting some rapid work in, and that's going to lead to some big gains with the power clean. So that second strength movement is the back squat. I love the back squat. I think it's phenomenal. And I like doing back squats to the box. Partial range of motion back squats and full range of motion back squats. Improve your mobility. And the biggest factor here behind the back squat is again, it's going to help you with rate of force development. It's gonna help you with your trunk stability. It's going to help you during the drive phase because you're going to get stronger and you will learn how to properly push because of the hip flexion you'll be achieving in the bottom of that full range of motion back squat that trunk stability will carry over tremendously at the high end speed when you're running, but utilize a back squat. If you like the front squat, front squats are amazing as well. And they both have science that back them up that they do correlate to optimal speed. That third lift, barbell or dumbbell step ups. And what this can do is it can lead to tremendous coordination between your glutes and your quads. It can teach your body how to coordinate properly and it can teach you how to drive so if we remember back to those three main elements of speed the second aspect is acceleration during the drive phase step ups is a unilateral exercise that's going to carry over tremendously to the drive phase which is going to increase your acceleration so that fourth exercise one-legged squats some people call them bulgarian single leg squats but there's nothing bulgarian about them we call them one-legged squats, we call them single leg squats, and we've had multiple world records. We've had guys single leg squat 500 plus pounds to a pad. We've had guys rep out 400 plus pounds. We've had some of the best running backs in high school, four and five star recruits who have been able to single leg 370 plus pounds for reps. And the reason why they are so fast when they're on the football field or when they're playing soccer or when they're playing lacrosse is because how often 
we utilize single leg squats. We do them at least twice a week because they target the glutes tremendously. They target the hamstrings very well, and they also increase your trunk stability. It can really, really improve your running mechanics and your mobility throughout your hips. You will lose less energy while you're running, and that's going to lead to more speed. So use those single leg squats twice a week. I would recommend going heavy once a week and going lighter that second training session but utilize them so that you can increase that top end speed. So our fifth strength exercise that we love to use for speed development is a little sneaky one. It's called the glute ham isometric. So I like having my athletes hold that glute ham position fully extended, almost the exact same position you would be when you are running at top end speed and you're grounding right underneath that center of mass. It's going to be a very similar position while you're holding that isometric position on the glute ham machine. Now, the reason why we like to do isometric work is because the hamstrings respond very, very well to isometric work. They also respond very well to slight perturbations. So if you're holding a dumbbell or you put a plate on your back or you're using a banded and you're doing slight perturbations at that extended position, your hamstrings are gonna to start to coordinate very well with the posterior chain. That in turn will lead to faster stride frequency and ultimately a longer stride, which will increase your ability to run faster. So utilize these five key strength movements so that you can continue to develop your speed and enhance your acceleration on the field, on the court, wherever it is that you're competing. If you head over to garagestrength.com, you can pick up our 12 week how to get faster program where we utilize all these concepts to help you achieve your running goals. Check out this video right here so you can continue to educate yourself on speed, on strength, and continue to develop your speed over time. Thanks for tuning in, peace.